Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Morning Glory video. In today's episode, we shall be asking and answering one simple question. What are the best loadouts for your Kazakhin squad? You see, the Cadian Elite are a very popular unit and they're pretty powerful and they are very cool. But they do come with a dizzying array of special weapons. And sometimes it can be tricky to know which ones to take. But do not panic, my little conscripts. Never fear, for Morian Glory is here. And I'm going to take you through, step by step, which weapons that I would be putting on my Kazakhin to make them an effective unit on the tabletop. And so, with that all said, I guess there's no need to mess around. Let's lift up the rock, have a look underneath, and dive right into today's episode. So the first thing that we're going to do is briefly look at the different weapon options that we have. Once we understand the systems at our fingertips, we can then know what to equip our troopers with. To start off, each unit of Kazakin comes at a fixed size. You have to take one sergeant and nine Kazakin troopers. This separates them from some of the other elite choices the guard can take, such as Scions, where you have that variable squad size. But nope, Kazakin, big, 10-man, chunky squads all the way. As standard, each Kazakin sergeant is equipped with a hotshot las pistol and chainsword, and every Kazakin trooper is equipped with a hotshot las gun and a close combat weapon. But whilst the Kazakin may start off with a bunch of hotshot las guns and las pistols, not overly impressive, they quickly get to upgun with an impressive array of special weapons that they have access to. Up to four Kazakhin troopers can have their hotshot las gun replaced with one of the following. A flamer, a grenade launcher, a hotshot volley gun, a melter gun or a plasma gun. However, you can't take four of the same special weapons. So you can't take four Kazakhin with flamers to make some sort of insane Bernie squad. You can't do that. You can only take each special weapon twice in a unit. So you could equip them with four separate special weapons. So you could have one flamer, one grenade launcher, one hotshot volley gun, or one melter gun. Or you could go for pairs of weapons. For example, you could go for two grenade launchers and two plasma guns. Now, we'll get into which special weapons you should be taking in just a moment. But first, let's continue looking at our overall options. After the four main special weapon guys, we also have another trooper that can swap out a las gun for a hot shot marksman's rifle. This in essence gives us a fifth special weapon in the squad, although we don't have any choice about what weapon he gets. It has to be that hot shot rifle, that hot shot marksman's rifle. Now that covers most of the damage dealing equipment, the special weapons, if you will, but there are two other bits of war gear we can take. Firstly, one Kazakhin can ditch his hotshot Laz rifle and take a hotshot Laz pistol instead, and also a melter mine. And then we have another Kazakhin trooper who gets to keep his hotshot Laz gun. He's not swapping it out for once, and he gets to put on a Vox caster as a bit of extra equipment. We then get to the Kazakhin sergeant, and he can swap his chainsword for a power weapon, which you're going to do pretty much every single time because it's just a straight upgrade. And then he can swap out his hotshot las pistol for either a bolt pistol or a plasma pistol. And again, I'm just going to tell you now, you're going to swap out that hotshot las pistol for the plasma pistol every single time because it is just a straight upgrade. If I don't mention it again later in the video, just assume that every Kazakhin sergeant in every loadout, whichever we're talking about, has got that power sword and that plasma pistol. So now that we know what the weapons are, let's start working out how we can use them to create some pretty deadly loadouts. The first of which I call the Dakakin. This is where you take your squad and you specialize it to put out as many shots as possible. The aim of the game is to have good anti-infantry capabilities. We want to be scything down rank upon rank of the enemy. We want to be spinning out so much lead it makes their head spin. And to do this, we are going to equip our 
Kazakin with two hotshot volley guns and we're also going to equip them with two plasma guns. We're not going to take the hotshot sniper rifle. I know, controversial choice, but bear with me. And we're also not going to take the melter mine, even though they are free upgrades. We will, of course, take the Voxcaster because we get to keep the rifle. And our sergeant is going to have the plasma pistol and the power sword. The reason that we are eschewing things like the marksman rifle and the melter mine is because we want to focus on those hotshot las guns because they are rapid fire and therefore they can put out more shots. A hotshot rifle only puts out one shot, same for the pistol, but when we're done with our hotshot rifles, they're going to be putting out three shots each. That's six in total, which is three times the number of shots we'd be getting from those special equipment and that special weapon. So overall, our squad will be equipped with two hotshot volley guns, two plasma guns, one plasma pistol, and five hotshot las rifles. All of these weapons are rapid fire, and that means they pair very nicely with the order first rank fire, second rank fire. What a lot of people don't realize is that first rank fire has changed from 8th and 9th edition through to 10th edition. Previously, it only affected your hotshot or regular las guns, but now it affects all of the rapid fire weapons in your unit, giving them an extra shot. This means that your hotshot volley guns actually get three shots at a 30 inch range and they get five shots in rapid fire range. And the main aim of the game with this unit is to get it into rapid fire range. If you do so with first rank fire, second rank fire, you will get a total of 10 hot shot volley gun shots. Plus you will get seven plasma shots, three from each plasma gun and one from the plasma pistol. That's 17 shots from just half the squad. And then the remaining five guys, because we didn't give them things like the melter mine and we didn't give them the hot shot sniper, each one of those guys is getting three shots, which means that's another 15 shots you're getting in the unit. But so from a single 10 man squad, you are getting 32 shots in total. But wait, there's more because this loadout pairs very nicely with Acadian Castellum. You see, the Caden Castellan is a standalone officer, just one bloke, and he can lead a Kazakhin unit. Now, when he does that, it's going to unlock two really nice things for you. Firstly, it means you'll be able to double stack orders onto your Kazakhin unit. Kazakhin can receive an order from an officer, and then they can use their own warrior elite ability to give themselves another order. And very specifically, it does allow you to put two orders on one unit, something you can't normally do. This means that not only can your Cadian Castellan tell them to first rank fire, second rank fire, getting all those shots we just talked about, but also the Kazakhin can then use their Warrior Elite ability to give themselves take aim. So now all of that DACA is hitting on twos. But we're not done yet because the Caden Castellan also gives the unit that he is leading sustained hits. Now, if you're putting out 32 shots, you should consistently be getting an additional five sustained hits. And if you've got reroll ones on the unit, which is very easy to do if you're just taking scout sentinels in your army, which you probably will be doing in a nice hybrid guard army there, but it should also include scout sentinels. It means you're going to have a unit of Kazakim, which is putting out 32 shots, hitting on twos, rerolling ones with sustained hits. Very, very likely you're going to hit with everything, meaning that each squad can put out 37 hits a turn. Now, of course, those shots do still need to wound the enemy. And this loadout, whilst it has a very high volume of fire, it doesn't have very strong firepower. It's not very punchy. It very much is a case of quantity has a quality of its own. You could target this into a vehicle, but you're probably just looking at grinding it down and it's not super efficient. 
Really, this Kazakhan unit is designed fundamentally to be an anti-infantry one, and that's where it shines. It can deal with any light to medium infantry, any guardsmen or equivalent things like termagants, all the way up to marines and their equivalents. So you've got things like intercessors, and it can probably, although it's not... You're probably reaching the edge of its capabilities now. It can do some work against heavy infantry such as Terminators. Although when you go into those units, a lot of your shots are going to be wounding on fives rather than fours. And also, you're probably going to need some sort of AP boost. Something like an Exterminator with Withering Hails of Fire or Fields of Fire Stratagem. Because AP-1 is alright and that's what a lot of your Volley Guns and your Hotshot Lasgas have got. But if those Terminators are in cover, it, it's basically doing nothing. So it's very good at cutting down infantry, light infantry, medium infantry. It can start tickling heavy infantry but it's going to need a bit more support. And against vehicles, really you are just hoping that you can get lots of sixes to wound and that your opponent fails a few armor saves. Attention Guardsmen, this is an announcement by the Departmento Munitorum. Element Games is an official sponsor of the Mordian Glory channel. They offer up to 20% off Warhammer 40k and 10% off bolt action and other game systems. Use the link down in the description to save money and support the channel. Anyone not using the link will be referred to the local commissariat. Also, don't forget that if you use referral code TIM3921, then you will receive double store credit, saving even more money on your future purchases. That's all for now. Full out! But now let's move on to our second loadout, which I like to call the Sniper Kin. And this squad works the complete opposite to the last one. Rather than being focused on quantity of firepower, rather than thinking about getting up close and doing as much damage with all that rapid fire goodness, instead, the purpose of this unit is to sit back and peck away at the enemy. Do some long range fire support. And rather than being first in and then probably first to die, hopefully what this unit can achieve is some steady damage over many turns and whilst it's not doing an overtly huge amount of punch to your opponent it is consistently laying on the damage consistently laying on the wounds and over the course of five turns it more than pays for itself to equip a sniperkin unit we are going to give two of our kazakhan troopers grenade launchers and we're going to give the other two plasma guns we shall be taking the Hotshot Marksman Rifle, but we're not going to take the Melter Mine. Everyone else is going to have LAS Rifles, with of course the Sergeant having his customary Plas Pistol and Power Sword. But to be honest, in this particular loadout, if I could give him a longer range weapon, even if it's something just like a Bolter, that would definitely be my choice, because here we're trying to achieve damage at range. So the Pistol, it might not even get to shoot. If all goes well, your sergeant will get to keep it holstered the entire game, whilst the rest of the troopers are actually doing what they need to do. Now, looking closely at the weapons in this squad, all of them have got a 24 inch range or longer, and most of the special weapons don't get a benefit for getting up close and personal. The grenade launchers and the marksman rifle are still gonna be one shot, even if you're only a few inches away from your opponent. This means that there is no real need to get up close in order to do the damage that you're looking for. Rather, this unit does a very good job once it's nestled into a bit of cover with a decent fire lane where it can start launching out. Well, typically you're going to be looking at the crack rounds here because they are very punchy. They do have strength 9, AP-2 and D3 damage. And likewise, you're going to be there shooting with your Hotshot Marksman Rifle, who will be able to hit on twos thanks to precision and heavy. And then he'll have that strength for, again, AP minus two. Very tasty. Lots of good AP in this unit. And then that flat damage three. Enough to take the head off a lot of infantry, even a marine infantry. And also, of course, some minor characters as well. The plasma guns do get better. If you get closer, let's not uh, let's not beat around the bush there. They are rapid fire, but even at range, they're still getting a couple of shots out of them, and they will be strength eight. Again, AP minus three 
and two damage. We're going to be overcharging them every time. So what we're getting out of this squad is about five pretty punchy shots every turn. And that's being backed up by a handful of the Hotshot Lasgun weapons as well. Now to make this loadout work the most effectively, what you want to do is look around the terrain on the table and find a bit that allows your unit of Kazakhstan to get tucked into cover. They can stay still. So that means they're going to start getting born soldiers but they have line of sight onto an objective. They have something that they can cover. And what this means is, whilst your infantry are pushing onto the objective, making a lot of noise, drawing a lot of attention onto them, getting a lot of shots fired at them because they're fighting over the primary points and your opponent doesn't want you to do that. And whilst your Lima Russes are there making a very overt display of firepower, which is going to draw a lot of firepower onto them, your Kazakhin are on a nice three plus save maybe even more if you give them take cover they might even be on a, a really really tasty save then and what you can do is just keep firing at the enemy taking advantage of that board soldiers getting the shots in that you need and you've got sufficient punch and sufficient ap that it means that no matter what target you're looking at whether it's a vehicle or it's infantry or it's some kind of heavy infantry or transport you're going to have the ability to do damage to it. If it's something that's really heavy, you've got born soldiers on your side. If it's some kind of infantry, if it's, especially if it's like super heavy infantry like custodies or terminators, you've got the strength and more importantly, you've got the AP, because most of your weapons here are AP 2 or higher, to really start kicking them down. And importantly, you've got the damage. All of your shots on average are putting out damage 2 or higher. And that quickly starts to stack up. Now, I know what you're thinking about this loadout. Mordian, it doesn't sound very effective. If I want a unit that can just sit back and do fire support, why wouldn't I go for something like a Lehman Russ? And what if I want to move on to an objective? I mean, movement is key. You're always telling us that movement wins games. Having something that's just like dug in, putting out a few pot shots, doesn't sound great to me. Well, the advantage of this unit, first and foremost, is one, it's still a Kazakhin unit at the end of the day. If you need to flip the switch and go onto the offensive, you absolutely can do. It has no problem getting stuck in. If you have a unit that needs to push onto objective, the lines are getting a bit thin, you can do that. It's tactically flexible. You know, if it starts getting up close and personal, then the rapid fire starts kicking in the plasma guns, the plasma pistol on the side starts kicking in, and then you've also got the hotshot rifle as well that start getting more shots. So it doesn't mind getting up close at all. It's totally okay with that. And secondly, and I think this is probably the biggest point in its favor, is it's extremely cheap. When you look at something like a blob of infantry, your typical Krieg unit with a Death Corps Marshal leading it, that's 190 points. That's quite expensive to push onto an objective. Yeah, sure, it, can t it does the job, but it's almost double the cost of this Kazakhin unit. If I look at a Lehman Russ, if I'm looking at a serious one, one of the ones that is actually going to do damage or be a good fire support unit, you're looking at 180 points. And that's not taking into account the hidden cost of any orders you might have. Think about it, you're going to have a Lord Solar Squad supporting that. That's 240 points for the cheapest Lord Solar Squad. Okay, well, each one of those orders is, if, you, if you're taking him to do those three orders in your tanks, that works out at about 80 points per order. So that means... Like if you take the 180 points of the Lima Exterminator, add on the 80 points of the what you're paying for the for the order, you're looking at a 260 point unit. That's almost three times the cost of the Kazakhin to get some good fire support. Kazakhin are completely self-contained. This unit doesn't need a Castellan babysitting it. It doesn't need any other sort of orders to look after it. They can just warrior elite themselves and have all the orders they need. They can just sit there because it's low volume of fire. Really, they just want to take aim to make sure that their shots connect. Brilliant. That's all you need to worry about. So this unit, whilst it's not overtly flashy, the advantage is that it's going to be cheap. It's going to be hopefully surviving many turns because your regular infantry are going to be absorbing casualties as they push onto objectives. Your tanks are going to be a much more obvious threat that your opponent's going to launch the anti-tank into. And over the course of four or five turns, the amount of accumulated damage that this squad can do is quite effective. 
I would say comparing the Sniperkin to the Dakakin. I'd say the Dakakin like to be run in multiple, so you don't want a single Dakakin squad. If you're thinking of taking Kazakin, you want two or three Dakakin squads. Whereas the Sniperkin, if you've only got the one unit of Kazakin, they are, it's a perfect loadout for them. It's an extra bit of fire support that can be used tactically, flexibly, and it should contribute every single game. But our third and final loadout is something that I like to call the Classikin. And it is the classic way of running them. You take your 10-man squad, you give your sergeant that plasma pistol and power sword, and he's going to use it this time. And then you give two troopers, two plasma guns. You give another two troopers, two melter guns. You give one guy the hotshot sniper. You give another guy the melter mine. Yes, we're finally using the melter mine. And then we take the vox caster as well. This squad is designed to get in, get up close and personal, do as much damage as possible against any target, and then die. And as long as it does some damage before it goes out, you're having a good time. Plasma guns have got the strength, they've got the AP, they've got the damage, they've got the rate of fire to just take on a little bit of everything. Then you've got the melter guns in there for when you've got a really hard target. Sure, they're only strength 9, but they are AP 4. So unless your opponent's got an invulnerable save, you should be doing some damage to them. Plasma pistol, of course, falls in the same thing as the plasma guns. And now we're looking at the melter mine because the point is that we're hoping to get up close and personal. Sure, we have to get within three inches of the enemy to do it, but we are hoping to be getting into melter range, which is what, six inches on a melter gun? So we're getting there. This is the kind of unit that you'd probably have in a Chimera or something that's going to come in from reserve, come in on a flank and just start smashing stuff. And that Melter Mine is going to do more damage than the extra hotshot rifle that we'd have in this case because we're not looking for sustained hits or anything like that. No, we're looking to do damage. This is the first loadout that I would say we have that really, truly, properly can threaten enemy war machines. And between all the plasma, the melter, and the melter mine, we've got a unit that can really just tear a chunk out of pretty much anything your enemy is likely to have. Another advantage of this kind of unit is it can, or it feels more natural for it to operate in multiple phases because it's getting up close. There's nothing quite like giving your enemy a point blank volley of plasma and melter shots, slinging a mine at them, and then fixing bayonets and getting stuck in. Kazakin do have a surprising amount of shots. They have shots, stabs, I should say. Uh, they get two attacks each, and then the sergeant's got the power sword as well. So you're looking at 21 attacks coming from this one unit, which isn't too shabby at all. So the Classikin is the way that most people will have them built. It is the classic loadout. It really can take on anything. It's got the volume of fire to deal with hordes. It's got the AP and strength to deal with elite infantry. And it's got just enough punch and the special equipment to start threatening vehicles. Because that melter mine gets up there with a 2D3 against a vehicle. That's a lot of mortal wounds you can do there. So it's just a really good classic way of running a Kazakin. You hit them hard, you hit them fast. And you hope that you do enough damage that when your Kazakhan die, it doesn't matter and they trade really well. And that, my dear conscripts, covers the three loadouts that I would recommend you consider for your Kazakhan squads in 10th edition. But of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Is there a loadout that I have missed that you think I should have included? Of course, if you've enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's 
always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is a lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and Patreons. You guys are amazing. Truly the lifeblood of the channel. I could not do more doing glory full time without the incredible and generous support of my members. So thank you guys so much. And last, but certainly not least, I want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier Patreons. These are the War Masters, the people who have truly gone above and beyond the Call of Duty. So a massive thank you to Bon Bon Vert, Mad Larkin, Mark Panconi, RJ Scorpion, Swordfish Trombone, John Stubbs, Nick Walsh, Diesel Fox, August Vardy and the Tommies. Thank you guys. Your incredible support makes a huge difference and it is a big part of how I'm able to do Mordian Glory full time. But that's all for now. Thank you for watching and of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.